Up. Hi, and welcome to our chapter about transformations and piecewise functions. Now, the way I'm going to do this is sort of build it gradually, because I've never met a student in Algebra 2 or Pre-Calc who didn't have some level of confusion about this stuff. So what I'm going to do is instead of introducing all those crazy library functions with all the weird shapes and then doing transformations, I'm going to have this first video be just about a parabola, and we'll see what we can do to a parabola as far as moving it around, shifting it upside down, that kind of stuff. And once you understand that, we'll get into all the weird different types of curves and things that uh, you'll be responsible for by the end of the, you know, by the time you take a test on this stuff. So let's take a look. Just as a reminder, if you have the function f of x equals y squared, which is really just like y equals x squared, right? That's a parabola, and its vertex is normally right at the origin, and it just go, swoops upwards on both sides. And of course, we could graph this thing by plugging in points. You know, if we plugged in one for x, we'd get one for y. And then if we plugged in 2 for x, we get 4 for y. So that's one way to graph them. But now, using adding some other numbers to this equation, various places, we're going to move it up and around and flip it over and stuff. So let's see how the, all that works. All right, so the first one is the number in the parentheses. And it's going to be a horizontal shift. So what we mean by a horizontal shift is we're going to take that parabola and move it side to side. And the way we do that is by putting a number in the parentheses with the x. So instead of having just x squared, we're going to put x, give x a little buddy, another number, but that's also squared. So the way to spot the horizontal shift is that because the parabola has an exponent of 2, the horizontal shift is in there with the x in the same boat as the x, getting squared right along with the x. Now why is this a horizontal shift? One, in the original function, if you add y equals x squared, when you plug in 0 for x, you got 0, right? So you got the point 0 comma 0, and that was your vertex. And then anything else you'd plug in would give you higher points than that. But what happens when we plug in, you know, look at x minus 1? What number would give us a 0 y coordinate now? Well, now if you plug in 0, you'll get negative 1 squared, which is 1. So when you plug, your y intercept now went to here instead of down there at the origin. What would we have to do in order to get a y equals 0 out of this thing? You know, the old vertex was right here, and I'm saying there's a horizontal shift. So which x value would put us right along the x-axis here and give us a vertex again? It'd have to be positive 1. Because if you set this x minus 1 equals 0, x equals 1. So basically, because this 1 is being taken away, x has to compensate for that by adding 1 to itself, getting 1 bigger, in order to get 0 again. So that's why a negative 1 has to be compensated by x getting bigger, and bigger means to the right. So that's why our new vertex is going to be right here. Now it'll turn out that as we plug in numbers, like if we plug in 2, plug in 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1. So now a point that used to be right here is going to be right here. And if we go to 3, we're going to get 4. So 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So now we're going to get a point right here that used to be right here. So every single point on the original parabola is going to get shifted to the right one. And that's because of the minus sign. So this is the key thing. What I mean by backwards is that the horizontal shift has a negative sign in front of it automatically. So if you have a negative one, that's actually a shift to the right one in the positive direction. So it's kind of opposite, backwards or opposite, whatever. The second number, and the reason these are a little bit confusing, is because for the vertical shift, we're not going to flip it. It's not going to be a minus sign. It's going to be whatever you see. So in this case, we have a plus 2. That means an actual positive shift, an up shift of 2. So that means we're going to have a vertical shift of 2 to the original. Because keep in mind, we started with a parabola that came from right here. If we move it upwards 2, we're going to just have a vertex that's right here, still facing upwards and everything. Now, just a little explanation for why that is. Before, if I had plugged in 0 for x, I would get 0, right? Because the original vertex was 0, 0. Well, now if I plug in 0 for x, x squared, you know, 0 squared is still 0, but we're tacking 2 onto it. And that's how we got plus 2. And that's going to, if we plug in 1, we used to get 1 squared is 1, so 1, 1. But now we're going to get 1, 1 plus 2, 1, 3. So you'll notice these first two points were just up and over 1, except now that whole thing just goes boop. So every point on the original parabola, we're now going to just shift upwards by 2. And that's and the shorthand way of doing that is just to realize, hey, it's a vertical shift of 2, so I'm going to draw my new vertex. Tell the teacher, hey, I know where the vertex is. 
and then just go ahead and draw it. You don't have to plug in a ton of points. On these problems, it's okay to be pretty rough with your sketch. You just want like a key point or two to be shifted properly. So the key point on a parabola is a vertex. So if we show the vertex being too higher than it used to be, the teacher knows that we know what's up. All right, here's a problem where we're going to put horizontal and vertical in the same problem. So it's, it's helpful when you're first starting these to sort of identify the shifts and write it down. Sometimes teachers make you do this. So we got an up shift of two and we have a, a left shift of three, now a right shift of three, because remember, this is opposite. So this is gonna be right three. So what we'll do is we'll just say, oh, well, you could even like sort of lightly color in the original vertex. You say, okay, so this is right three, boom, boom, boom. And then I'm gonna go up two. And now my vertex is right there. And all I have to do is just crudely draw a parabola. Again, if you want to be super accurate, you could plug in points and stuff like that, get a few more points. But, um, you know, this is good enough for government work, and most teachers would take it. Here's another one. All right, this time we have a negative one over here. So that's gonna, remember, that's the one that's not in the parentheses. The one in the parentheses is backwards. So that means a plus three is actually a left three. And the way we spotted the horizontal shift again is that it's with the x. As we get in the, hor the uh, library functions and stuff, you know, if you had a square root of x minus 3 or x plus 3, that 3 is in there under the square root with the x. Everything that happens to the x is happening to the 3. If we had an absolute value function, the horizontal shift again would be in the absolute values with the x. And that's the way you spot the horizontal shift. If it's in there with the x going through everything the x is going through in terms of getting square rooted, cubed, whatever crazy stuff, then that's how you know that it's a horizontal shift. Whereas the Y shift is all by itself. It doesn't care what you're doing. It doesn't care what kind of function this is. You know, whether it's a square root function, an absolute value function, none of that's happening to the one out here, the negative one. It's all by itself. That's what makes it a vertical shift. So that means we're gonna have a vertical shift of down one. Because remember, we don't change the sign on this one. All right, so it's a parabola. I know that because it's got a squared in it. So all I gotta do is do my thing. So left three, one, two, three down one, and then still gonna be a right side up parabola because we haven't done the upside down thing yet. All right, the number out front. This is where things get a little trickier for students. On the bright side, teachers don't usually care about this. But basically a stretch is, you know, it's where you take this, the drawing and sort of make it taller and skinnier than it usually is or make it shorter and fatter. And a lot of times students get confused because like which one's a stretch what do you call a stretch? Well, basically, the number out front is stretch. And if it's bigger, I can show you how it works just by plugging in points. So if we just wanted to um, plot this graph, it's going to be 2 times x squared. So if you plug in 0, you still get 0. So we'll still have 0, 0. If you plug in 1, so here's some x values and y values. If you plug in 0, you still get 0. So the point 0, 0 is in the graph. If you plug in 1, 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. Ah. So in the original parabola, we'd get 1 comma 1. This time we're getting 1 comma 2. And if we plug in 2, we'll get 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. So in our, a normal parabola, you just get 2 squared is 4, but now we're getting 8. So you see how every one of these values is double what the original parabola would add? And of course, when you double the y values, they end up going a lot higher. So instead of being right here for our next one, we're like, whoa, almost off the charts. And it being a parabola, it's symmetrical. So it's kind of like this. So here's the, here's the graph of the one that's been vertically stretched by two. Real pretty. And then the original would have been over here and kind of doing more of a wide thing. So you can see the difference is not very big between the two. And that is the reason that your teacher can't really bust you for these. Unless you have a teacher who makes you like label some points. Like maybe you have a teacher that makes you put one comma two on the graph just to really show you know what you're doing. But most teachers will settle just for the graph because all they care about is that it's, you know, in the right place, like you got the shifts right. One, one uh, exception on the stretch thing, if there's a fraction out front, and here's where kids get confused. Let's say this was a one-half x squared. What's that going to do? Well, it's going to, it, if we go back to our original function, x squared, uh, sorry about that, Let's see, x, y. If we plug in zero, we still get zero, so the vertex hasn't been moved by this number out front. But what happens is if we plug in x1, we'll get one squared as one, times one half gives us one half. 
and then we plug in two instead of four we'll get two so what happens is you get a much wider parabola so that's a thing that really messes kids up is it kind of seems like what would a fraction do people sort of assume that it's a lot of kids assume it would make it taller and skinnier but what makes things tall is having a tall stretch and what makes things short is having a inverse stretch or when you, you could look at this as sort of like dividing by two whatever I'll have a sum up slide at the very end and then last thing is the flip now you'll notice this is also out front so often you'll see this in combination with stretch like you might have a negative 2x squared that would mean that the thing was stretched by 2 so it's tall and skinny but then you flip it a negative sign is just going to give us a list of points that are negative instead of positive because the fun thing about x squared is that it's always positive so if you put a negative out front it's always negative so let's just make a list of points as we often do whenever we're confused about how to graph something just plug in x's plug in x, 0 for x, you still get 0. But if you plug in 1, you get 1 squared is 1 times the negative 1 is negative 1. Plug in 2, same thing will happen, we'll get negative 4. And then for 3, we get negative 9. And the same thing's going to happen if we plug in negative numbers. So if I plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is positive 1, but then a negative times that is negative 1. Now it's really important that this negative sign, with your order of operations, PEMDAS, you do the squaring before you do the negative. So if I plug in a negative 2, it's going to be negative 2 squared, and then the negative out front. So we've got to do negative 2 squared is 4, times negative 1 is negative 4. So negative 2, negative 4. And that's why that negative sign is creating an upside-down parabola. So, not too shabby. The negative is honestly the one that kids usually have the best time with. All right, so here's everything put together. Bookmark this, memorize it, you know print screen, save it as a JPEG, whatever. The, um, well, you also find something like this in your book, most likely, because usually teachers are pretty good about labeling stuff. Often you'll see a version that has letters where they'll call this A, and they'll call this H, I guess. And they'll call this K, and call those coordinates the vertex and stuff. We'll get, that into a, we'll get into that stuff in a later chapter about graphing parabolas, specifically, because it's kind of a big deal. But for now, just remember what numbers do what to stuff. So the negative outside, out front flips this, it's stretched vertically, so it's you know taller and thinner. The negative two is opposite. So even though this is a negative number, that's actually a right shift of two. Whereas this negative two is the y shift, so that really is a negative shift of two or a down shift of two. All right, so there you go. Before we get into the crazy graphing stuff, in the next video we'll introduce the library functions, which is square roots, cube roots, all that kind of junk. So we'll know what they're supposed to look like, so we can then do all this stuff to them in really hard problems after that.